Hi, this is Dan from Magic Pachinko Restorations, and this video is designed to give you a good look at the pachinko machine that you are considering purchasing. This made is this is made by Nisogen. Uh, this is a Model A recycler. Uh, I'll show you what that means when we look at the back side of the machine. The the date on this, I, I wasn't able to see uh, the, the number that tells me what the date of the manufacturer was. So my guess is probably early 70s on this one. Um, everything that you see, uh, whether it's plastic or metal, gets taken off the machine. Um, every part gets taken off. Every part then gets cleaned um, as clean as I can get it to get rid of the dirt, the grime, uh, the smoke residue, so on and so forth that uh, uh, really makes these machines a mess. Uh, that all gets cleaned off and then everything gets put back on. So, all of the plastic, all of the nails get taken out, the stainless steel rails, everything you see gets taken off, cleaned. I tumble the nails so that it gets rid of all the tarnish on the nails, get rid of any rust. Um, these plastic parts are, are when typically when you get when you find pachinko machines in people's basements and barns and so on and so forth, uh, they're just absolutely filthy. And these have all been cleaned up. Again, all the plastic parts have been waxed. This has all been taken apart. And every part gets taken apart individually. Again, the brass gets all cleaned back up to uh, nice and shiny. All of the wood that's in here and on the back side of the machine gets sanded down, polyurethaned, so that it doesn't absorb uh, any moisture or anything like that. This down in here, this area in here that may look dirty on the video, up in here, the dark spots, uh, that's not dirt. Um, that's actually very clean, but it is, um, over the years, uh, moisture seeps underneath the, the uh, play field, what they call the play field, and it stains the wood that's underneath. So that's what that is. That's not dirt. That's just uh, what they call water damage. It's just something that happens to the, the pachinko machines over time. So I'm going to put some balls in the upper hopper and we'll, we'll show you how the, the machine plays. The nice thing about Pachinko is anybody, any age can play it. It really doesn't require any skill. There is some uh, technique involved, of course, in wit for winning, but uh, skill-wise, as long as you can do this, you can play Pachinko. So it's just a matter of launching the balls and then letting gravity take over. The ball went in there. Uh, that triggers the whole mechanism. I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, the center light lights up, lets you know that you have won a prize, and 14 balls come out up here. That's the, the prize for winning. Um, notice that this tulip, they call it a tulip, is now closed. Um, it makes it much more difficult to get the ball in there than it is when it's open. Um, but keep in mind that the pachinko parlors didn't want you to win all the time. So I got it into that pay pocket and it paid. Okay, again, the, the winning balls come out here and a few balls come down here. So you can always transfer balls here. If you get too many in this tray, you just pull back and they'll go down into the lower tray. Depending on, on how you have this machine mounted, it's freestanding now. Um, this one doesn't have any uh, stabilizing feet on it, so it is a little bit tippy. You wouldn't, you probably wouldn't want to play it this way. You'd probably want to put some stabilization feet on it, or mount this into a cabinet and put it on the wall. But uh, it's just a matter of reaching up over the top of the machine and and putting the balls back in the hopper. Uh, this is plugged in. Uh, it's a nine volt power supply. So, uh, let me turn it around. So this is the, the guts side, if you will. This is the 9 volt power supply. It just goes up here, uh, ties in, goes through a fuse. It's only 9 volts. It's just enough to light a light bulb here or a light bulb here. This is the jackpot light bulb. It's real easy to change if it ever goes out. And this is what's called the ball out light. Um, I'll explain that in just a second. So the balls go into this, this hopper up here. They funnel down 
to this spot and they cue. And then this, this tray is also full of balls. The balls continue into this chamber. And if you could see in there, you would see a holder that has 14 balls. When the machine is triggered to win, it just drops like this. The 14 balls run out. It comes back up and 14 more balls go back in. So a losing ball goes back into the, into the tray. Uh, with a lot of pachinko machines, a losing ball will exit the machine. So you need a box or something to catch them. In this particular machine, with it being a recycler, any losing ball goes back into the center tray. Um, when the center tray starts getting empty, if it pays out a lot, this will automatically open up and let more balls in. So it's, it's pretty rare that you have to put balls into this particular kind of machine. It just keeps using them over and over and over again. Again, everything you see on here has been taken off, thoroughly cleaned. The board gets sanded down. It gets polyurethaned. Uh, and then all of the parts get put back on. Um, you'll see all the parts are put back on with screws. When they were manufactured 45, 50 years ago, most everything was, was just stapled onto the board. Um, those staples are all rusty. They get taken off and thrown away. And uh, screws are now in place to hold everything in place. Okay? This frame is red mahogany. It's a very pretty wood. Uh, actually, it's kind of a rare wood now. Uh, back 45, 50 years ago, it was fairly common. But uh, this has all been sanded smooth and, again, polyurethaned to protect it. Um, all of the mechanism is, is clean. These are all brass pieces. Again, they've all been cleaned up and uh, fully functional. So uh, what I offer uh, above and beyond this particular video will be another video that will um, show you again how to load the hopper, uh, where to look in case a ball gets stuck or something like that. Uh, my phone number, my email address, um, I'm available anytime. Um, I'm retired. This is what I do for fun. So I enjoy talking to people about the pachinkos. I would always be there if you ever needed me uh, for any problem with the machine. Um, we have shipped so far uh, this will be the 22nd machine that I've done. Uh, we've shipped them all over the country. Um, East Coast, um, New York City, and um, down south to Alabama. I just recently shipped one out to uh, Seattle, Washington. We do a good job packing them up. Um, we have never had any complaints about any breakage on the machines when they arrive. So, uh, again, you can buy with confidence. Um, I encourage you to ask me any questions prior to your purchase. If you want to, you can get through to me uh, under my buyer name, Magic Joe Dan. You just click on Contact Buyer and ask any question you'd like. So, uh, hope this one is uh, finds a home in, in your home. Thank you very much.